Narcissism, Horror versus Terror Before I worked with Paul, the concept of horror was not part of my analytic understanding of the emotional causes of illness. I did not include horror in the spectrum of emotions I presented and analyzed in my book, Pleasure. On the other hand, I had often referred to terror, a term often used interchangeably with horror, as an emotion, namely, as an extreme state of fear. The schizoid personality, for instance, develops as a reaction to terror, not horror. Unlike terror, however, horror is not an emotion, because there is no feeling quality to the state of horror. According to the dictionary definition, terror denotes an intense fear, which is somewhat prolonged and may refer to imagined or future dangers. Horror implies a sense of shock and dread. The danger to which it refers contains an element of evil and may threaten others rather than the self. Although there may be an element of fear in horror, the Latin root of the word means great fear, it is not dominant. What predominates is a feeling of repulsion coupled with its opposite attraction. Horror movies, for example, build on this dual aspect. Two characteristics of horror are important to our present discussion. One is the focus on a danger or harm to others. The other is the way the experience of horror affects the person. Imagine being faced with the prospect of an airplane crash yourself. It is terrifying. The idea of this accident happening to others, however, is horrifying. One is horrified at witnessing a brutal attack on another, but terrified when the attack is against oneself. Soldiers may describe the terrors of war, but non-combatants tend to emphasize its horrors. Of course, war can be both terrifying and horrifying to those engaged in it. Understanding this, we can appreciate that Paul's reaction to the violence in his home was one of horror. Horror is not an emotion, because there is no movement or motion associated with it. In terror, on the other hand, there is an actual or potential motor force involved. Terror is related to the Greek word trien, to flee and to the Sanskrit word trasiti, he or she trembles. Many of us have experienced the trembling or shaking that follows an escape from a dangerous accident. This is our reaction to terror at the prospect of serious injury. In horror, there is no physical reaction. According to the dictionary, the essence of horror is a sense of shock, but I don't think that, quote, shock is the right word. Terror can produce a state of shock. When a cat digs its claws or teeth into a mouse, the mouse goes into a state of shock and doesn't feel pain. We may observe that when the mouse is let go temporarily, it lies still for a moment paralyzed. If the shock passes, it attempts to escape. We say that a person is frozen with terror. In shock, blood is withdrawn from the surface of the body, paralyzing the voluntary musculature. As a result, the person becomes pale and often falls down in a faint. In the Florida Everglades, I once saw an alligator with a bird in its mouth. The bird was alive and conscious, but it was motionless. It did not struggle to get free. Of course, it couldn't escape 
and a moment later the alligator submerged and drowned the bird. I am sure the bird felt no pain because shock numbs the body. It acts as a local anesthetic. In horror, in contrast to terror, the body is relatively unaffected for there is no threat of physical danger. The effect of horror is primarily on the mind. Horror stuns the mind. It paralyzes the mental apparatus as terror paralyzes the physical apparatus. One may walk away from a scene of horror seemingly unaffected physically, but one may be incapable of thinking about anything but the horror one has just witnessed. In one's mind, one goes over the scene again and again, searching for some understanding. But one can find no explanation. One cannot integrate the experience because horror is, by its very nature, incomprehensible. It lies in one's mind, just as some indigestible, indigestible food particle might lie in one's stomach, producing a similar sense of disgust and revulsion. One wants to throw it up to free oneself from it. This is the repulsive side of horror. I shall discuss its attraction later. Dracula and Frankenstein's monster are typical of horror movie character characters. Dracula, risen from the dead and drinking the blood of innocent victims, is a fantasy image. But, in some sense, he must be real because of the effect this image has have on us. The idea that some creature would drink human blood may be fantasy today, but it could have been a real phenomenon in man's early evolutionary history when he was vulnerable to animal predators. If we pictured such an attack upon ourselves, we would be filled with terror. In a horror movie, the terror is minimum since we feel relatively safe. It fascinates and repels us, and we react to the horror only. But this effect may also have something to do with the fact that in early times, mankind pictured the world as full of good and bad spirits, benevolent gods and goddesses opposing monsters and demons. Greek mythology is replete with stories of heroes fighting with monsters, like Hercules' destruction of Hydra, a nine-headed serpent with breath so poisonous that whoever it touched fell dead, or Perseus's destruction of Medusa, one of the Gorgon sisters, who was so horrifying that whoever looked her in the face instantly turned to stone. These monsters represent the wild, uncontrollable, and incomprehensible forces of nature, Human victory over these horrors symbolize man's ability to overcome this primitive fear of the unknown through courage, strength, and intelligence. For most people today, nature, even at its most frightening, hurricanes or earthquakes, does not present itself as monstrous or nightmarish. However, the victory is not fully won. There are still incomprehensible forces in human nature that can evoke a sense of horror in us. Dracula and Frankenstein's monster are human-like monsters. Unfortunately, there are human monsters too. Hitler, for example, was seen as a monster by many people, and pictures of the Nazi concentration camps still evoke a sense of horror in us. Human monsters are characterized by their lack of human feelings. Mass murderers, sex criminals, and muggers are regarded as monsters. Their behavior is incomprehensible to a normal person and evokes a sense of horror. An all too common example is the feeling is the following. A mother walking with her six-year-old son on the streets of New York City was mugged and brutally beaten. The little boy looked on in horror but he seemed untouched. His mind, as I imagine it, could only think, no, it's impossible, it shouldn't be happening. Why? I don't understand it. He saw the muggers as monsters. 
Horror is not the only reaction to an incomprehensible event. Awe is another possible reaction. A situation that cannot be taken in, comprehended, by the mind will be viewed with horror or awe, depending on whether it has negative or positive connotations for the viewer. Seeing an armada of planes fly overhead to bomb the enemy can be awesome. The same armada seen by the enemy may evoke a feeling of terror if one believes oneself to be personally threatened by the attack, or horror if the attack seems directed elsewhere and one feels safe. However, in most situations of horror, there is some element of terror. Since one cannot avoid some identification with the victim, and so one does experience some degree of fear. The distinction between horror and terror enables us to understand an essential difference between the narcissistic and schizoid disturbances. The schizoid personality stems directly from the experience of terror. My book, The Betrayal of the Body, makes this clear. The schizoid body is frozen, frozen with terror. It is in a state of shock. Blood and energy are withdrawn from the surface of the body, often leaving it cold and unalive. The body of the narcissistic individual is relatively unaffected by the experience of horror. The inability to respond emotionally stems from the denial of feelings that are potentially present in the body. But the experiences of horror and terror are not mutually exclusive. A person can be subject to both with the result of that his or her personality may show both schizoid and narcissistic tendencies. The evaluation of such a case depends on the degree of each factor. It becomes a matter of clinical judgment.